If you haven't heard of the Excel data model or power pivot, then this is going to amaze you. Let's go. I'm going to import 10 million rows of data into Excel, or more specifically, the Excel data model, and analyze that data, slice and dice it in a whole bunch of ways that traditionally would have required maybe 100 million VLOOKUP formulas. But now with the data model in Excel, you can do it easily. I'll even build a 3D map. So my data, let me bring it in. Here we go. We have a whole bunch of CSV files. Each one's got about half a million to a million records in each, okay, totaling about 250 megabytes of data. I'm just going to grab this folder path and pull that data in and using Power Query in Excel. And Power Query in Excel can stack the data. Each file can be stacked on top of each other, consolidated into one nice table. And then I've already got if I pop out the Power Query panel, I've already got a little calendar table loaded for me to slice and dice my data by year and by month and by day of the week, whatever I need. I've got a location table loaded, which is simply a little lookup table with my location code and what country, state, city, postcode that actually means. And a small cost center table with a cost center code and what cost center that is and what manager that is and what all these things you'd traditionally use VLOOKUP formulas to give you. So those are already loaded. I need to get my data. So under the data tab, we go to get data from file, but not from text or CSV, from folder. So I click on from folder. I've got a whole nother video explaining this from folder. I'll get a little link to pop up in the video here. So here's my folder path and I'm clicking OK. It'll then prompt me with a little list of all the files that are in that folder and then give me some options down here. The one I always choose is Combine and Transform because it gives me a chance to check my data before I load it. Then it'll ask me what type of CSV file it is. I never know, so I just always click OK. So I click OK. Then because I said combine and transform, it'll open up the Power Query window. And it's opened it on a different screen. So let me just pull that across. So here we have it. All my data starting to be stacked on top of each other. Okay. And I'll just rename this as um, consolidation, just to show you. And the only thing I'm going to change is this cost. This is multiple decimal numbers. And when I was just preparing for this demo, if I load 100 million, sorry, 10 million records with this level of decimal places, the Excel file at the end is about 250 megabytes. If I change it here to currency, that truncates the decimal numbers and the file halves in size. So the Excel file at the end of this would only be 125 meg. But to be honest, if you go whole number, the actual file shrinks down to about 15 megabytes. So that's 250 megabytes of source files shrunk down. Now, if you need the decimals for accuracy, then go for it. But if you don't, and if you're building a BI solution or a report, do you really need those decimals? The compression and the performance would be so much better. So I'm changing that to whole number. Then I pick close and load two. Now this is going to be 10 million rows of data. Excel can handle about a million in a sheet. So you cannot load it to a table. You have to tick the add to the data model, only create connection. Okay, that means it won't get loaded as a sheet. And I click OK. And down the bottom right hand corner, you can start to see the consolidation happening. Here we go, 240, 300, 400,000 records. Now, to save you just sitting there watching this tick away, it'll take about 60 seconds. 
I'll just speed this up about four times. And here we go, 10 million rows loaded. That's incredible. You really need 64-bit version of Excel to do this successfully, okay? If you're not sure what version you've got, you go to File, Account, and click About Excel. And in the top here, it should say 64-bit. That can use a lot more RAM on your machine than the 32-bit version. Right, so what do we do with this? Well, now we go to the Manage Data Model. Diagram view. And here is my consolidation table. And now I can do all sorts of lookups. So I want to go from my location code to my location code. Now that's 10 million records doing the equivalent of one, two, three, four lookups. So that's 40 million VLOOKUPs essentially replaced, or XLOOKUPs these days. Then I'll do the same here. Here's another 10 million times another three. So that's another 30 million lookups. And if I also hook it up to my calendar so that I can analyze things by year, month, quarter, financial year, day of the week, then I'm into the, you know, over a hundred million formulas being replaced there. That's it, that's my data model, awesome. So if I go into a new sheet and I now insert a pivot table, I can close this little panel on the right and here's my values. So I can go to my consolidation, bring in my cost, go to my calendar, do it by uh, calendar year and month. Let me just make this a bit wider and let me format my numbers. Okay, actually not month number, I wanted calendar year. Excellent. And then I'll turn that into a chart I'll go to one of my templates that I've set up. Here's one that I use all the time. Beautiful. And there's my chart from those 10 million rows. And let's say I wanna see this by manager. So let's just go to the cost center, right click on manager, add as a slicer. And here's my manager slicer. Okay. And I can just happily slice and dice this chart by whichever manager I want. Pretty awesome. So let's finish off with a quick 3D map. So if I go into insert 3D map, now you might have to go into um, add-ins and switch this on. It's called power maps or 3D maps. I click on this and then it'll just kick me in to a map. And I can collapse my little tables here. So I want to do country and I could go to state level if I wanted to, or I can go city or even down to postcode. And then for my height of my bar, I'd like to go to my consolidation and put the cost in there. This is pretty nifty. And you can start zooming in. Okay, and you can zoom around with your map and you can get down into individual suburb levels, etc. Pretty cool, change the angle, zoom back out, rotate the earth, pretty awesome, okay? And you can even add a time axis. So if I go into my calendar and I put date into the time field, I then get a play axis and I can click play and see my maps my data growing over time. That's pretty awesome. So the data model in Excel can handle millions of records. I'd recommend you need 64-bit Excel and Power Query can stack all these tables on top of each other from a particular folder, for example, or from any data source and relationships um, between tables replace all those VLOOKUP formulas. Final note. The reminder, the cost column. If I kept all the decimal places, my Excel file, when I save it, 
So let me just go here and do a file save as, okay? And I'll just save it into this folder as final and go save. Let's see how big this Excel file is. Because I took out the decimals, here is the file and this file, 14 megabytes in size, even though it's consolidating 250 megabytes of data. So do you really need those decimals? It's a good question. So if you like this, um, please click on the big access analytic icon to subscribe, give this um, video a like and tell all your friends. We'll catch you later.